Hey, everybody. How's it going? What's up, man? Shalom. 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 Happy weekend. Shalom. Good you guys. Been been good. good. Hey, everybody. This is the realist dude, my wife, Emma. <laughs> hey. Shalom. 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 Hey, Emma. Shalom. That sounds so excited. Relax. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so this week, <laughs> this week, gentlemen, uh, I mean, uh, we're, we're going to discuss something important that we always touch on in our episodes. At least I do, because I'm a broken record. I say this constantly. So does Russell to a certain extent. Other, <laughs> other broken record here. That's context. Context is important, because if you don't context what you're reading, it's just gibberish. You'll never understand it. Exactly. So we are, we are living in 2020, and I've horribly dated this episode. The point is, we're living in 2020, and we're reading a text that is well over 2,000 years old. Um, so it's important to understand the players involved, the region, why the region is important, the structures, mainly the temple, people ruling, people ruling the who, 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 yeah, exactly. who, who served in the temple, where, where, what, where it was situated, why it was important, all that stuff. So politics, politics, because <laughs> everyone loves to talk about politics on a Friday night. Especially bah, bah. Yeah, all the time, especially at the family table. Like we have the extended oh, family. Oh, yeah. you, know, you know, all these young kids these days talking about politics all day, every day. The oh, yeah. come over. That's the main topic. So, to do this, we're going to break it down into just four levels. Pretty simple. The four levels are going to be level one is the region and its rulers. Okay. So, Judea at the time, who ruled it, why? Level two is the city of Jerusalem, and why, where it is, and the areas around it were important. Level three is the second temple itself. Uh, its function, and what it meant to the people and the culture in the region. And then level four is the priests themselves, the people in the temple that serviced it and made it do the thing it did, make the temple do the thing. So we'll just start from the top at a macro scale and work our way down to a micro scale. So it kind of like zooming out and then zooming in. It's like it, it's like those satellite pictures that the government takes of all of yeah. us and then they slowly zoom in to like where I'm sitting before they left the next one. That's what we're going to do. But biblically. So the first thing we, we should cover is the first level, which is the region. Right? So we're, in, we're, we're, we're setting our sights to Judea, uh, modern-day Israel. And at this time, it is, uh, at, at, in this particular case, it is uh, 67 B.C. And in 67 B.C., Queen Solome, right? Sa. Sa, sorry, Salome, Alexandra, Dies and she's part of the Hasmonean dynasty. She's she's I believe the last queen of the Hasmonean dynasty. She dies and two sons claim the throne. Both, both of them did equally. So there's a civil war, as you do. This goes on for what, four years because in 67 BC they bring in uh, General Pompey of Rome. And mm-hmm. If you don't know who Pompey is, Pompey was part of the triumvirate that worked with uh, Crassus and Julius Caesar. We all know. And those those three guys were instrumental in turning the Roman Republic into an empire. So they bring this guy, who's bad news. They bring him in to arbitrate, to decide who's going to be who. And this opened the door. Right, that's definitely that's exactly it. This, this opened the door for the Romans to come in and take the region. So he decided one son would be the ruler. Other son said, nah, bro, it's, I, don't, I don't like that. And so Pompey was like, fine, I'll just take everything. Then. So he marches in with some legions, takes the region. That is why Judea is under Roman rule later on in the first century when, when, when Yeshua comes from Judea. So, so the scriptures are set under Roman rule because of the Jewish reason. And from that point on, the Jews are dealing with, with the Romans. So that is to kind of set the stage of you know, who is ruling, why they're ruling, and everything. So that's level one. Yeah. Now we're going to go level two. Right? These are going to move fast. This, this, this is going to be a quick cast. Right? The real dude's quick cast. Wasn't it a chill cast? Chill cast, quick cast. I don't know, that's we, all, we all want to go to bed, so it's fine. Real chill cast. Learn. Real quick chill cast. At a much faster rate than normal. That's fine. That's cool. I so feel like... What's up? Wait. We're going to talk about the, the region and its rulers. Mm-hmm. So we went from the Hasmoneans, like, yeah. and then the Romans got involved, right? Mm-hmm. And so... But before the Hasmoneans, well, I mean, the way that things would traditionally run and the way that things traditionally did go for a while is that, you know, the priests were kind of the figureheads. The high priest was the figurehead of the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. But then then we had the Hasmoneans where they were 
Priestly line, and they also made themselves the king, the kings, which is kind of like a no-no, big no-no. But then, whenever um, Rome gets involved, they appoint Herod, King Herod, as the ruler. Yeah. Who's the Jew? They pro- they pronounce him the king of the Jews. Yeah. And so, like Herod came to power, who's that's also a big political because he was not of the line of David. Like yeah. he he wasn't a priest like the Hasmoneans were, which was also like a no no. And yeah. then he's also of Edomite origins, like of mixed Jewish origins and Edomite origins. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's like this guy definitely shouldn't be the king. Of David. <laughs> Should they even be close? So yeah. yeah. Like the standard operating procedure for Rome really rubbed everyone the wrong way. Mm-hmm. It's all wrong. So I, I believe Herod was very was very pro Rome, and so I'm sure that's 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 why they brought him up in, as as king. Right? He was more or less yeah. a puppet. He's but like a puppet, have, a puppet. Yeah. He took advantage of the civil war, but of the the dynastic disputes within the Hasmonean dynasty, to basically be like, hey, look, look, like I'm a I'm a pretty great guy. You should put me in charge. Hey, Pompey, I'm totally. Pro Rome, bro. Put me in. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. Put me in. Put me in. I'll promote you. I'll promote you. Stand for. I like you, I like you Moxie, kid. You're in. <laughs> so Herod gets involved. Herod, Herod rules on behalf of Rome, or he got his power through them. Yeah. He's so now Herod's indebted to them. Right. Um, and he's also crazy king. Insane. So crazy, in fact, so crazy, in fact, that at Masada, his his personal dwellings at Masada actually face away from, from the sun and are shielded from the sun because he had trouble sleeping at night because he had a lot of major issues going on. Yeah. So you can go to Masada now and see where he slept. And if you go there, it's like the sun, ideally, when he sleeps, the sun never actually hits you. It's always dark on that side. What was the condition he had? Like, it, he wanted everything big? That's a... Um... It has a name. I yeah, forgot. It's, it's a certain. He, like, he was obsessed with everything big. That's why and, the Masada was so huge, amazing. Like he needed to Did everything it? big. <laughs> Didn't he kill his two sons? Or what? Didn't he kill his two sons? That sounds about right. That's why some classic crazy ruler. I can't remember right? who that was. Like, no. If you're gonna be a crazy ruler, you gotta do the <laughs> ruin your lineage. Sons, and you gotta kill all of them. So you're out your, your lineup. That's how. That's how classic. I don't trust people. any of you. So. Goodbye. <laughs> but uh, but another big upset. So it's like you would naturally, you would have the king and yeah. then you would have the high priest as well. And so um, while there wasn't an actual king, king, you know, there was the high priest. He acted as a figurehead for the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. But whenever Rome gets involved, Rome has this policy, you know, we'll find, we'll go through the leaders of the people in order to control the people. We'll make them like out. We'll, we'll set, one of our guys in like a head position. And so the people will listen to the person in that position. And so we can rule through this person. But the thing is, is whenever we talk about the high priest, that's someone who's supposed to be of moral virtue, uh, moral purity, righteous and just, uh, obeys the Torah. And you can't just put an illegitimate person in the role of the high priesthood. But the thing is, is that the high priesthood was a bought out position Right. Uh, the Romans put like a priest that would be indebted to them in was, the place was, of the high priest. Uh, it was it was Caiaphas, I believe, right? Uh, eventually, yeah, it was, right. it was Caiaphas, yeah. So at least in in the first century, in the lens we're talking about, it, it ended up being Caiaphas. So we're talking right. about corruption. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Holy big God. corruption. But kind of think before the Romans got involved, you know, you people may have put the high priest up on a pedestal, like he. Like, even if we have no king, like the high priest is our leader. He kind of leads the people uh, in religious matters, huh? He's like the, 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 the spiritual leader. Yeah. yeah, the spiritual leader. And it's like, and he goes into the Holy of Holies on our behalf, right? To, to cleanse uh, the people on the Day of Atonement. Yeah. He basically is the spiritual leader of the people of Israel, but then the position is completely delegitimized by Rome. And so the prestige of the high priesthood has just kind of has really been lowered in the eyes of the people. It's like, ah, eh, you know, it's like he is he is the high priest and you might respect the office, but you don't really respect the high priest as much anymore. And you know so because hmm? you know it's corrupt. You know right. it's trustworthy. Right. And so 
now there's somewhat of like a power vacuum, like a like this influence vacuum. And, you know, we start seeing people like the Pharisees start uh, rising in significance at this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, local leaders of the people who were not priests. You know, the priests still have some uh, type of influence, but the priesthood uh, has been delegitimized to a certain extent. They're becoming more of an aristocratic group. Uh, a little bit. From, from what it, it's been diminished from what it was meant to be into something more politically driven. Right. And so then we start having like the Pharisees or like a populist movement, these populist, this populist movement, like they are the leaders of the people. Yeah. And like, even though, you know, there, there's a certain level of corruption, of religious corruption that would eventually accompany some people within the Pharisaic movement. Yeah. But maybe yeah. not all of them, but some of them, yeah. but you know, they, the Pharisees and the priests weren't necessarily Related, there are two different groups. Yeah, they, they were two different groups that operated out, out of the same area, which, mm-hmm. is, which which was the temple, which is where they met. Which is a pretty good segue into level two, which is the temple itself. It's the temple and the city which it dwells, which is Jerusalem, and surrounding provinces. So you mentioned the uh, the, the the Pharisees become a, a populist movement that puts a lot of people in a weird catch twenty two because the rulings they make are legally binding, right? A lot, but they are you know you're, they were put in place to rule in these matters. And so legally, they have they they have to obey them, but at the same time, they're being corrupted. Right? So it's putting people in a weird position in terms of legally and spiritually. But on 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 that same note, it's important to understand Jerusalem itself, and where it is, and things like like where where exactly was Yeshua born? So we we say Yeshua of Nazareth, but where where, where was he actually born? Well, Bethlehem. He was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Yeah. Here's the, here's the onion. Okay. So, if we look at Bethlehem on a map, it's a lot closer than Nazareth. To Jerusalem. Oh, we have a map here. We, we, yeah, to Jerusalem. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. We have a map here. I don't know. If, I don't know if we can see this. So, we're, we're Let's doing, do doing extra. We're doing extra stuff on this one. This episode. All right? We're doing. We're doing maps and everything. It's crazy. I love it. So we got. Yushalayim, if I can find it. Oh, this is embarrassing. There it is. Yushalayim, way down here. And Bethlehem is right next to it, only a few miles away. Okay. Yeah. And then way up here in the north, we got Nazareth. So why is it so important that Yeshua was born in Bethlehem? That's my question. Yeah, why did he travel to Bethlehem? Yeah, like why, why, was, why, why, did, it, why did the text go out of its way to mention he was born in Bethlehem? Because if it didn't matter... the city of the temple? Oh, sorry, what? Because in the vicinity of the temple? My man, you got it. Got this. Exactly. So the temple had a certain partition of land around it that was dedicated to the temple. The resources of that land would go towards the functioning of the temple. Included wine, olive, wheat, animals, whatever it, you know, whatever it may be. Bread. 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 Bethlehem was, was the bread basket of, of, that, of that part of the region. So. Nom, nom. So are, are you saying that Bethlehem was like a city that supplied the temple was resources? It was one of the cities. Right. It, it was one of the, one, was, of the yeah, one of the areas that supplied it. I think they and, called them like the daughters of Jerusalem. Like there's like a, a name. There, I think there was like a name for some of these surrounding cities. Like like with the daughters of. <laughs> there's like yeah, a type. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. I don't know. I can't pinpoint it, but I've heard that. If we can find it, then we'll, we'll mention it definitely on the episode. But yeah, yeah. I think I think you love it. And so it's definitely since it does mention these things. There has to be a certain level of importance to them. So the fact that he was born there, it does it logically. If you think about it, if you're going to set a partition of land out for use only in the temple, it's, it has to be sanctified. You, you're not going to let some random sheep herder's sheep in the temple when it's, it hasn't been inspected and certified by the priests themselves. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 but. so it's that it's it's important to keep that in mind. At least keep in mind. The city's location, what's around it, and what happened in that region. Yeah, because, uh, right. I mean, like, he could have just been born in Nazareth, and at one point they decided to flee to Egypt. They could have gone to Egypt before. He exactly. could have been born there and come back, but... He could have been born in Cairo, yeah. born in whatever. So it's, people People look over, they they value the birth of Yeshua because it's, it's, it's immaculate. I, I, I agree it's divine, but they don't, people don't usually focus on the geographical location and what it meant at the time. Yeah. And that's to me it's very strange because I feel like it should be connected a little better than it really is. So that's As a they don't get t- they don't get I don't think they get teached the context like 
we're talking now. You know what I mean? Like I feel like they get like this over. Very rare. Well, I don't think it's that. They I go think spiritual. It's, yeah. They go spirit. I think it's, it's just overlooked. Time. You know, it just overlook because it's just it just mentions the city, but that's it. And we don't mm-hmm. really know much about Bethlehem, like historically was. No. So people just assume, you know, if it doesn't mention Bethlehem that much, it must not be important. But well, it, it's it's also important to understand its relation to Jerusalem, because it, again, when you look on a map, they're very they're very close to Jerusalem. Yeah, it could have as been opposed to Nazareth. Yeah. So yeah, so it's it's important to understand not just the city itself and why it's important, but where it is and in, in relation to the, to the temple. Russell, do you have something to say? Like, no, yeah, all right. You look like yeah, you get ready to just pop something out there. We'll I'm gonna shoot this, and then uh, <laughs> all right, we'll get there. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, good. I'm so excited for that. So um, that was that was kind of level two, right? Uh, the next level of setting the scene. Level three is the second temple itself, and its importance to the people, to the culture, to the region, not just spiritually, but culturally and um, even commercially. There, there was a lot of a lot of commerce, a lot of traffic, a lot of people moving through Jerusalem, moving through the temple, moving out, and then a lot of that was was disseminated. So Think of it like as the beating heart of Judaism. Yeah. The Judaism of Judea, of that whole region, it was it was rivaled only by Antioch, really. You know, up in the, like it, it, like Antioch was one of the three main cities in the Roman Empire, one of the three big. Okay. But at least in terms of wealth and cultural, cultural significance in that part of the world, Jerusalem was right there. So for the Romans, Antioch was most was one of the most important cities there. For the Jews, it was Jerusalem. They both had a lot of people and commerce and wealth flowing through, but for very very different reasons, a very different cultural significance. Yeah. And uh, if I'm wrong in any of this, please fact check me. You you three, any viewers out there, leave me a comment. Please. Uh, so that I don't proclaim to be all knowing. No. Not even remotely. But it has to be. It, the temple you, was uh, an impressive structure and pretty massive. For the that commerce and all that uh, that foot traffic that a lot of people come to visit, you know the, the, the feast. Yeah, for the feast. Yeah, feast. I mean, outside of the so, temple, there was like a market. A um, market. So this is very important. Yeah, there's several markets. There were yeah. Multiple uh, markets. Well, I mean, I we can't really reference. Uh, you can download the temple app uh, on the, was it iOS. And I, on iOS. Android. And uh, was and it the Play Store? And the Play Store Android, Android, Android. for Android. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's a good app to use as a reference about the temple. Mm-hmm. But I think it's on the very most on the left side. I don't know what direction that would be. That I think, I the think that's part. the, Royal the southern part, right? So yeah, yeah. going to the Royal south, Star. there's like this, that big section there, uh, mm-hmm. and that's where the merchants would be, right? Mm-hmm. Outside it, of like. It was- yeah, it, it wasn't so much merchants, but it was more. It was one of the spots they would do. Right. They, would, they would do money changing. It was one of them. Money so it was changing. Money changing. But more importantly, it was where people would come in, exchange currency to get uh, su- supplies they need for for sacrifices, different components like that. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, money flowing through for that specific reason. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And I'm not At trying to say like the temple's a business. And that's what I'm saying. In case there's somebody it's, taking it, yeah, <laughs> it's not a business. It's but it, again, there is a lot of administration going on in the temple. A lot more people get you know, the credit for. There were offices and people working on things and different records being kept and supplies yeah. being used and everything. So people need to understand it was, it was, it wasn't it was a whole system. It was a whole system. It yeah, whole it's like how like many? Money. Yeah, Just go ahead, Alex. No, I was gonna say like like how many how many I can't remember how many priests it took to uh, move the the door um, the curtain. Yeah. Oh. Um, I forgot. I think it was, I want to say 13. I was going to say 13. I thought it was, it was like 20 something. It was several that's just for that function. Yeah, because I think it's like, it's it's as thick as like your arm. So, and it's as high as seven stories. Like, yeah. It was that's like a hand breath. Hand. hand breath. Well, in my case, you know, <laughs> I got thick arms. I'm like a Lego. I'm like a Lego. It just like, it just goes down. <laughs> but the, uh, if we think, about the this like the temple as well there's this whole money aspect to it because the you know people a lot of times in the ancient world kept their wealth and their money in temples it was a sacred thing people might not necessarily just go and rob a temple yeah uh, and so people kept their money there and people you know there was the the Beha Otsarot in the the temple in Jerusalem there was a big treasury in the temple as well people kept their money there and 
And uh, it was a very central thing. It was the center, like everyone, they made pilgrimage to it three times a year, unless some, you were to make an optional, like personal travel to Jerusalem. Uh, in addition to those three, which were required, if you could make them. Uh, so people made pilgrimage to it from the diaspora and from all around Judea itself. Uh, people, you know, if you're praying, if you maybe can't even go there, but if you ever pray, you're supposed to face towards Jerusalem. And if you're in Jerusalem, you face towards the temple in Jerusalem. Uh, it's the center of a lot of things. Exactly. So knowing knowing its importance will also help clarify a lot of things in the scriptures. Of, you know, when, when Yeshua was found in temple teaching. And, and, he, and, you know, and like, like in Luke, and, and understanding what it meant to the people will kind of help shed some more light and give you a different perspective on why it was important he was there. And understanding that he did go there and he went there several times throughout his entire life. And so it's, And that doesn't mean he went to, into the Holy of Holies or the Holy or the instances <laughs> or no. where the altar is, exactly. you know. It's Many times many times it says like he's like in the outer courts and things like that. It never yeah. says he goes yeah. inside. Yeah. But some people might interpret because they don't know, mm -hmm. they don't understand that there's like a big structure. Which is why I would download the like, app. Second like temple. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. You download the app. Yeah. It's pretty. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. A lot it's for pretty the cool. visual learners, like <laughs> it helps there are rules lot. that people had to follow in the temple, and Yeshua followed the rules just like we would have to. Right. Yeah. Because like Yeshua was cool. He was taught. Right. Yeshua was cool. He followed the rules, kids. That's what he did. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in school, follow the rules, then do drugs. He was cool like that. <laughs> but like, I mean, if he didn't, he'd be disqualified. Imagine like so, he just goes into the holes of holies, grabs the bread, the shoe bread, just like takes oh a bite. Oh god, I don't want to think yeah, about that. that. Is terrible. It's like, like I'm in charge now. Oh no! Oh, take, no. The, take the seat. Nothing. It'll no. be. We'll be doomed. Yeah, if anyone were to do something like that, to they wouldn't even make it. <laughs> like, let's be honest. No, they, they, they wouldn't even make it. <laughs> there was temple guards to they prevent things bad. like that from happening. But exactly. were someone to to um, break the sancta of what they were allowed to do. You know, there were death penalties involved for this type of thing. You yeah. know, if someone, uh, you know, for priests who approached the altar with unwashed hands and feet, you know, it was, it was a death penalty. Sure. But, and it so is. how much more so for someone who was not a priest by birth? Yeah, precisely. Mm -hmm. so you, and it's you, interesting yeah. when you understand the, uh, like a, Honestly, the the function of the temple in in the scriptures, especially in the New Testament, right, in the, or in the New Testament, uh, how you know Yeshua is usually in the temple, he's teaching at the temple, he he's found with the with the el, you know, the the, el, the the leaders of the temple, you know, discussing the Torah and sharing thoughts, right? And so it's interesting how the structure, you know, is is basically pointed at. In scripture, but once you understand, like uh, Russell was saying, like the, the sancta and the importance of the temple and what it represents, right? Not only the structure to the book, but the the, the image of Elohim, right? That if you dishonor those levels of holiness that are set, you know, those boundaries, you will basically dishonoring the one that is, you know, basically dwelling in there. So not only the, the the structure itself, but what Elohim represents to that community and that commerce and those people that are there is a, a resemblance of the Creator itself. Yeah, this is this is all super important, obviously, but it more so takes the stories we've all read and turns it just from words on a page into a real place, into a fleshed out world that you can imagine, you can see, like, okay, now I understand how this worked, how this worked, where this was, why they felt this way, why they said these things, because of these sets of circumstances, and these, these, these protocols that were in place. Once you understand that, you can then focus less on what does, what do they mean when they say this phrase, and instead more on what is the subtext to the message in the book itself. Once you do that, you reach a new level of study which then opens up a different world entirely. It shows us all that we know about things. So it's great. Yep. It's all very simple. And we got to keep studying and learning. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad you guys brought this up because this, this is a good transition to the last level, which is the wow. most micro, which is the most detailed, and that is about the priests themselves and the people in the temple that made it work. 
They made the temple do the thing. If you want to make the temple do the holy stuff, you need you need Levites, you need priests, and you need them to do everything. And this doesn't just include just the sacrifices. It includes making the bread, includes you know handling the animals, includes yeah. working in the royal stoa, which in itself is a very interesting system, right? If I came from 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 the Babylonian region, from Mesopotamia, and I came up, I don't I can't bring a bull with me all the way there. That's yeah. it's hundreds of miles. That's not way I'm going to make it. So the idea is you bring your currency, you exchange it there, and they give you a voucher, and they take that voucher to the temple itself, and then they ex they bring the yeah. animal, and that's how you perform. That's that's how you bring forth your offering. And so to have that kind of complex system requires a lot of coordination, a lot of people all on the same page, and a lot of Levites and priests to know what they're doing. And um, it's it's a, it's a, it's something that people don't discuss enough. And I feel like it makes the temple feel more important. It makes it feel more real. It makes, oh, it, it, makes it, it makes it feel less like just a wall in Jerusalem, more like a real living place that existed. And it's a shame it's yeah. gone. And, and not only that, but like like less barbaric. Well, yeah, a lot less barbaric, yeah. It's more sophisticated than people give you credit for. Like, you know, like, again, if, if you download the app. Uh, <laughs> if you if you, uh, if you download the app, um, it's pretty cool because you get to see a lot of rooms that I didn't know were in the temple. Uh, the scroll, the scroll. Learn yeah, everything. Click the scrolls. Um, Second but they have like they have like the rooms for the for like the bread, the rooms for like all these knives that they use and stuff like that. Rooms with like um, I think for, the for the for instruments, the fire, yeah. for instruments. The rooms for the fire, for the <laughs> livestock, things like that. For the, the weapons, they had one there. For the yeah, like the, the, the dormitories for the Levites. Yeah, for, which are pretty yeah, cool. For, for during, during their week of being in the temple, they had dormitories for them. They even had uh, they even had a room for salt for all the yeah. sacrifices. Yeah. Never sacrifice without salt. You need a room to hold all the salt because they go through a lot. Yeah. So where is it? Why? What? How do they keep track of it? Where did they come from? Do they I think. I think hold the, the instruments for the Levites. The coolest room was yeah. the the coolest room was the one that was supposed to be for the leper. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, like it's in the court of the woman. It's gonna be towards the north, right on the right uh, side. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> like, the funny thing is that it's never been used because there's never been like a leopard that is until here. yep until until, until Yeshua, until... and that's why it was such a big deal when Yeshua healed these lepers. Not just because you know it's a miracle, but because it was a statement. So now, yeah. according to protocol, because his leper was healed, he has to go to the temple. He has to stand up in front of everybody. He has to make this statement about how he's healed. And then he goes to this room that's never been used before until now. So now everybody's going to be like, whoa, like, I think the Messiah is here. Oh, yeah. my God. So it, it, it helps to prove that the divinity was here. But what's something that it's interesting is when Yeshua said to the, to the leper, go present yourself to the priest. You, you've, been, you've been cleansed. The leper didn't ask. What do you mean? Uh, where where do, do I go? Know? Once you have the temple, where do I go? He knew exactly yeah. where to go. They yeah. all yeah. knew. They knew all of them. No one, no one was shocked when they, well, they were shocked when he came in, but no one was surprised when he when he said, oh, go present yourself to the priests. No, they he knew was, the protocols. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So it's important to know that they were raised in this. We are not. So we need to have this stuff explained to us. Otherwise, it's yeah, that, that story. That context. It's a, it's a, yeah. And also, like um, like Russell was saying, like he was saying how the, the priesthood was corrupt. You know, that way, it, that's, that explains why Yeshua, his trial was at night. Um, yeah. And it wasn't done correctly. Not valid. Uh, Not valid, bro. It wasn't valid. There's people missing and things like that. Um, yep. That, that explains missing. a lot. Like before, a lot. There's some people out there that be like, oh, you know, the Jews they killed Jesus. Um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. Making a very broad generalization and things like that. Yeah. But it's, some it's, Jews were involved, but not. Yeah. And Yeshua himself was a Jew, so it's like. Um, so he kills up. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. oh. But yeah, once you realize that the, the priesthood was bought out, basically, and was corrupt, um, it explains why they did the trial at night. That way, you know, they could keep a secret. Because a lot of the Jews actually supported Yeshua. It was a good and amount. And it was at, at the high priest's house, not even in, not even at the court, like, in yeah, the temple. Exactly. It was out yeah. of the temple. So that's part of the thing. It's like a part of the protocol. If there was going to be a death sentence, it had to... Uh, that sentencing had to take place during the day on the Temple Mount and uh, where where the court sessions were held there. Mm -hmm. There was a protocol in order to 
declare a death sentence on someone. Oh, and part of it was the the ability of the the Sanhedrin to even declare a death sentence at this point had been taken away by the Romans. They wouldn't allow them to issue death sentences. And so, um, but were they to be able to do something like this, they would have had to have done it in a court on the Temple Mount, mm -hmm. like in a court setting on the Temple Mount. And the thing is, is during the day, <laughs> even, yeah. it was a very technical process and all the rules were thrown out and we know that they weren't even doing this or they weren't supposed to, to be doing this at this time because the Romans didn't want them doing this at this time. And yeah. so the whole thing was messed up from every angle that you look at it. And it was just completely done under the rug. Yeah, it was uh, very, very and like uh, as a little side like fact, um, I don't know where it is. I, I don't know where you can find the historical reference, but it, it talks about how, you know, the priest, the the you know Rico, you told me about this. Uh, the priest, the their the how do you say the age range kept getting shorter and shorter every Yom Kippur. Um, like it went from yeah. like eighty right. years old to like exactly. forty, so, and then it just went to every year they kept. I know what you're talking. About. So during the time of the tabernacle, they had the original oil that was sanctified that was given to Moses, right? And as the time went on, they they lost that. So during, that's now during during the second temple when they come back from from Babylon, they don't have that exact recipe anymore. So the lifespan of the high priest is smaller and smaller. So you go from having priests that live in that that preside in the temple, high priests that live in the temple for many many years, to and they to smaller and smaller and smaller because as the priesthood keeps getting more corrupt and things start deteriorating, they will go into the holy of holies, Yom Kippur, and they'll be struck dead. So, all right, well, now we're going to get another high priest. And that's so why, good. that's why in the Bible it says, because uh, I forgot what's his name, the, the high priest? That's the A. Uh, what was it? Aaron? No, 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 no. Ananias? Ananias. Ananias. When, it's, Ananias. when it mentions Ananias, it says Ananias, the priest of this, of that year. Yeah. And, so, and if you study to the Torah, you know that the high priesthood is, you know, lineage, is lineage-wise. So once the, he gets to an age, he dies, his son takes over. The firstborn son. Exactly. So it doesn't it's make sense. To be for life. Yeah. So it's like, wait, of this year, he's not elected. Um, so it's like, <laughs> ouch, man. Oh boy. So it, again, it, 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 when once you once you again once you understand these things, the little the little lines start to jump out at you a lot more, and it starts yeah. to mean a lot more. It's like a new picture. Going. Yeah. And connect you. You start making those connections. Exactly. That at a certain moment you didn't you didn't. You know, it was just it was just some random like, thing. What? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, Whatever. those two go together. Yeah, yeah. What? But uh, yeah, uh, that's why context is really important because if you just read the Bible, I mean, you will learn something, but you're gonna miss a lot of things. You know, yes. uh, you're gonna miss, you miss a lot of things, a lot of big pictures. Because I'll before before I learned any of this, I you know, the New Testament was just you know a nice story about you know Yeshua coming, he's gonna save us. Be good, <laughs> things like Jennifer, that. Which, now, it's, not, it's not, it's not, it's not a bad story, and that's that's. I'm not saying that's not part of the story, but there's a lot of mm -hmm. things that you're missing without studying. And I think, like like you said, studying the historical context of the region and how things were done back then, it explains a lot of things that were done and said. Uh, and if you don't learn those things, you're going to be missing out. No, it also adds a lot of legitimacy. Yeah, that too. And, 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 yeah, it, it, it makes it more of a, of a, of a you know, a real legitimate place that would have really existed instead of just fantasy land. This magical so Bible place. Yeah. Bible land. Bible land. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, the Holy Land. The Holy Land experience. Holy Land experience. No. It's too Christian. Yeah. Anyway, so that, that's what I got. What, at least that's what I wanted to cover. We went from... 63 BC, the end of the Hasmonean. 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 And so you go from the end of that in 63, right, essentially, to the to 67, the, 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 the entrance of the Romans, setting the stage for all the other corruption that then later on manifests itself in the first century. In, in in Judea, in Jerusalem, in the temple, around that region, and in which that Beth, um, Yeshua was born in Bethlehem, sparking off a lot of uh, all the events that would lead up to the New Testament. So now 
understanding that little primer, you can go back, read those stories, and now you'll you'll have a better understanding of what was going. Yeah, of the context. All right. Context. I is think. Key. I think uh, we'll you know we'll cover other things in the New Testament, like um, the social cast. Uh, oh yeah. There's so much more. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff that we could talk about. It's been um, 50 minutes. There's no way I'm going to cover everything. There's yeah, no like it's, it's a lot of information. <laughs> yeah, we'll be here all night. Yeah, this is just the pro, uh, like a, a historical primer by the real dudes. It's all <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, a introduction. There you go. Yeah. A little taste. And then I scored your. But yeah. The salt we do now? Yeah. The salt guy? The salt guy. That's, that's, that's what we do with all this first century knowledge. There you go. Boom. That's, <laughs> that's what you do with the offering. <laughs> well, I think oh, yeah? we all work with salt base, so now I, I think it's that's, I think that's, that's a good way to I'm gonna transition out now. Yeah. I'll <laughs> out of this. yeah. So I'll see you guys whenever, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I'm sure we'll hang out after Shabbat. I mean, yeah. When, whenever. Well, but whenever like, that might be, because whoever knows whenever they're gonna watch this, you're gonna keep horribly gating this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Until so, next time. Yeah. Until next time, guys.